Michael, there is a huge amount of pressure on Labor to sever ties with the CFMEU, that is the Construction, Forestry and Maritime Employees Union, following damaging allegations of corruption, standover tactics, bullying and organised crime. Now, given the close relationship between the union movement and Labor, is it even possible for these state governments to break away? Well, I think the issue is more complex than disaffiliation from the ALP. Um, uh, we've got to deal with what we're actually seeing here. There's obviously criminality, and um, I think the current laws don't deal with this adequately enough. I think we sort of need to approach it as the US has approached it with some form of RICO laws where um, where you have organised conspiracies, um, you have the powers to deal with those conspiracies it, it, with penalties, associated penalties um, that reflect the crime. And I think that's in the first instance what needs to happen. And again, that's a matter for state governments primarily under our system, and they should look at those RICO laws. Um, in terms of the industrial thuggery that I've seen mentioned, um, you know, this is a problem. Um, and it's a more recent problem. I remember dealing with the um, the old BWIU before all the union amalgamations. And whilst I certainly didn't agree with their politics, um, they were Moscow aligned uh, primarily, um, they were principal people. And you could actually deal with them on uh, issues to do with industrial matters. And they, they tended to hold up um, the deals they had. The problem was that the uh, BLF was integrated within the BWIU to form the CFMEU and other unions amalgamated as well. And I think that's where the problems have arisen. There's um, a distinction between the various groups within the CFMEU and um, uh, their industrial interests. And I think that's causing some of the problems. Um, so th that's how I would respond to it. In terms of the ALP, uh, that's more to do with how industrial contracts and um, infrastructure contracts are run. I've always had this problem with um, contract efficiency where you've got state governments acting as custodians of the taxpayers' funds, um, dealing with unions who are technically are affiliated to the ALP and are able to exert pressure. Now, there, there needs to be a structure that deals with that. Um, I think the easiest structure there is to reinstate the... Um, the commission, the the old uh, construction commission that was abolished. However, that was a pretty ineffective uh, body, primarily because it uh, didn't know what its role was. I, I think its role has to be to focus on the trigger points for disputation, and those trigger points are primarily safety issues. Um, some of them legitimate, and other ones um, used as um, levers to extract um, uh, less productive outcomes. So I, I think I'd be looking there. Um, in terms of the 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 thuggery issue. I think um, there is a a need for the union movement itself, and I see they belatedly come to the party to self-regulate on those things. Um, and I agree with uh, Bill Kelty on that. Um, deregistering the union, which I think is um, one of the easiest things to mouth off, but it's much more difficult to implement because there are some uh, concerns about what happens in terms of uh, the industrial landscape once you do that. So. Well, uh, I think pretty, it's a complicated... I'm pretty sure P opposition leader Peter Dutton was out there calling for the union to be deregistered. And then there's mm. the question of, well, what happens to mm. all the contracts that are out there? What happens to all the jobs that have been doing and all the employees there? With, is that something that would create more problems than it would fix at this point in time? Well, I think so, because um, it was the original BFL, um, Builders Labourers Federation, deregistration that um, put some of these elements within the old BWIU in the first place. And you, you do have to have some sort of mechanism, some sort of bargaining mechanism in place, and uh, there are industrial awards. It's really a matter of getting the, the, um, the so-called alleged corruption out of the union, and that's a legal matter. Um, there's also a need to ensure that there's good faith bargaining and good faith implementation of those bargains, and I think that's where the, some sort of construction commission with powers that particularly focus around uh, the safety issues because these tend to be the trigger points for disputation. And then there's a, this third category of issues. You've got contracts, and uh, contracts issued by governments primarily in terms of infrastructure um, that you can see that it's an easy, it's an easy um, uh, leverage against the taxpayer to, to, to seek to get extra conditions and wages. Now, those contracts should have very clear industrial guidelines, so there should be award guidelines or enterprise bargaining guidelines that are actually um, 
uh, set and enforced by the Fair Work Commission. And if they deviate from that, there ought to be a penalty both on the unions and on the um, contractor, because the contractor works on a cost plus basis, goes back to the government and argues for more money. And we have these massive cost blowouts in infrastructure. Well, and cost, co- cost 